Are you tired of manual, time-consuming processes bogging down your team's productivity? Well, get ready to revolutionize your workflow with ServiceNow's Process Automation Designer. And in this video, we're diving deep into this game-changing feature that will not only streamline your business processes, but supercharge your team's efficiency. So stay tuned and find out how ServiceNow's Process Automation Designer can transform the way you work and propel your organization into new heights of success. So before we get too excited in the tool, let's talk about what is process automation design and we're better to do that than go and look at the doc site. Okay, so let's start off on ServiceNow's website itself. So it talks about the benefits of process automation designer. Rapid automation takes pressure off developers, developers workflows faster, single pane of organization, easy integrations. Okay, that's the designer there on the left hand side. Uh, okay, what else have we got? What else have we got? We've got activities, triggers, right? What else have we got here? Features. Oh, we've seen that. How to buy, not interested in that. Okay, so it gives us an interface where we can add activities. Let's look at the doc site itself. This mentions enterprise workflows, unified process, process automation designer. We've mentioned some of the benefits. Startup triggers flow designer we've seen and we've seen uh, Playbook as well playbook Get started with service uh, automation designer. Let's have a look. What have we got here? Ah, Okay, here's some of the roles uh, So we've got enables process owners to author cross enterprise. Okay a bit wordy Okay, so we've got some of the roles. We've got developer will use flow designer to create some flows and actions. Process owners will reuse the pad, let's call it pad from now on, um, in order to um, automate their process using flows that have been designed by developers. And workspace admins will configure the appropriate views on the business process for the right users. Okay, workspace admin, let's face it, all these three people are actually, or three roles are gonna be developers. Um, so we'll put uh, the uh, process automation designer output on the workspace, which will be consumed by a service desk agent. Uh, in order to start using this, have a look at flow designer. Okay, so the big flow designer element. Okay, so what we can glean from this is it's um, an interface for process owners slash developers to use and automate, kind of uh, give a consistent process. I guess if we consider the, the example, if you've got an incident that comes in and you want your service desk agents to treat that in the same way every single time, or ah, actually, good one, you've got a new service desk agent, you're, you're trying to treat them, uh, train them on a new process, you can put in that as, as process automation on via playbook to allow the service desk agents to all give the consistent experience to the customer. Enough waffle, let's go look at the tool. Okay, so let's head on over and we'll go process automation designer. Okay, getting started, what's that? Okay, so there's a plugin to install. So we need to install that plugin. There, there are other plugins as well. I'm gonna put a, li uh, a link to all the plugins in the description, so don't worry about that. Follow the steps to configure play playbook user experience. Let's have a look. I don't think we're going to do that though, because we're going to use the out of the box one. We're going to use the global playbook experience out of the box, so we don't need to do this. Um, you can do that if you'd like to. Ensure the current application is set to global. Got that. PD uh, admin. Okay. So now what they've got is they've got a an example to run through where we can create one based off that. That's useful, but it looks a lot of words, doesn't it? So let's just make it up as we go along. What's this one about? This is about interactions with VIPs. Useful use case. Let's make our own up and make this a bit quicker. You don't want to watch this, right? Let's get rid of that. So let's head over to Process Automation Designer. Okay, this is one of my. This is I'm late to the party on this, guys. Um, this has been on out since Paris. Um, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. So this is me playing around. If I get things mucked up, who cares, right? You're along for the journey. So we've got some new menu items. I've already installed the plugin, by the way. Uh, Process Automation Designer. What else have we got? Today's executions. Trigger definitions, that'll all come clear in a minute, I'm sure. Now, out of the box, we have these two. Should we have a quick look? Um, these two multi-process flows. Remediate server? Go on, let's have a look. This is process automation designer. This is the interface. What's this? To access, you need to upgrade it. Should we upgrade it? Should we do it? Let's do it. 
and I'll edit a video. What was this? Missing process trigger table license, whatever. I just wanted to see what it was. Okay, change request for immediate. Okay. Oh, diagram view, board view. Oh, this is quite fancy, isn't it? Very fancy. Right, okay, enough of that. Let's go and create, right, create new process. Let's just check we're in global. We are in global. We're going to call this demo of pad late to the party, if I can spell. Okay. And I'm going to keep this quick and snappy. Define our own trigger process. Is there anything we can choose? Is there anything in there? No. Right, okay, let's define. Okay, create, update, same as flow design. Let's do it based on create. We want to be quick. What's this? Let's do an incident. We like incident. We know incident. Everyone knows that, I hope. Um, condition. Condition. We're going to have no conditions because it's going to run on um, every incident. We could put some conditions, perhaps the service desk on create when it's uh, the service desk is it's created, maybe even updated to the service desk. But we're just going to leave it as incident. We're going to do everything. We're going to make it simple. We're going to make it easy. We're going to make it quick. The name of the game. Okay, what have we got? Ugh, I don't like that. Mind you. Well, well, okay, diagram view. I think this is new. Diagram view. Should we click something? No, let's not click something. Board view. Add stage. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, this is the one I'm used to seeing. Right, okay. Add stage. What stage should we have? Intake. When the process start, after specific stages, what's that? Don't know. Let's do when the process starts, save and close, boom. So when we click add an activity, so now we create our kind of uh, stages, our lanes as they were, um, we can then add activities. So if we do intake, so this will be, we're gonna put some instructions in here for the service desk to ask questions. Um, then what we're going to do is we're gonna, Oh, I don't know. Let's have one that says in progress. Oh, shall we? I don't know. What should we do? Yeah, let's have in progress. Um, I don't know what that means. We'll make it up. And then we'll have another one that's resolve. Something on resolve. So let's have a look. Intake. One. Let's add some instructions. One instruction. Immediately. We'll call it uh, talk nicely. Okay, when stage starts, ask a specific automation. Don't need any automation for that, do we? Message, add input data. To the, right, this is the message. So we could put, be nice to the caller. Wait for user input. Let's select yes on that UI layout. Tag light instructional. Whatever. Save and close. Right, okay, talk nicely. That's when the process starts. In progress, let's see what that is. Start rule, when process starts, after specific stage. Okay, so after the intake stage, this is going to run. So we're gonna talk nicely, and then we're going to, okay. When we click activity, add activity, it should be noted, the, these are like flow designer activities. We've got interactive and non-interactive. So this is where the developer part comes in. Create new activity, we can do that up there. Two-step instructions, so there's a lot of out the box ones that we can play around with and we can muck about. Let's go back to common. Let's create a record, whatever. Don't know what that means. What have I got to do? Cancel that. All right, let's create a record. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What else can we create? Create task. What's the difference? We create task. I'm going to create a task and then I'm going to remove that one. I'm going to create a task. What task? What task is it going to create? Create task activity? Is that a personal task? What is it? Nobody knows. Let's do it anyway. Let's see what happens. So we're going to create a task for Oh, hang on. Can I, can I, can I assign to? Can I short description assign? I think this is a personal task. Yeah, I think this is a personal task. Let me just add record, create record. Right, okay, let's cancel that. Come on, Russ. You can do this. Right, create record. Here we go. Create record. When stage starts, playbook display order one. Yes, automation table. Okay, right, okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this. We're gonna use incident task. Can, can I do that? Incident task, add fields, let's assign it. Let's assign to the same person as the incident, trigger incident. We are, this is very much like Flow Designer, isn't it? So we're gonna assign the incident task. Oh, no, we're not. We're gonna assign the incident task 
to another assignment group. Ah, here we go. Okay, we're gonna assign it to App Engine Admins. Guys, I'm gonna level with you here. Whilst I was editing, I realized I completely forgot to do something. Make sure you add in the incident reference number to the parent incident of this task. That way, when the task is assigned to the assignment group, they'll know it's got a parent and it's this incident. Otherwise, you've got nothing that attaches to two. Make sure you do that. I didn't. Okay, there we go. Why does it say missing fields still? Should we save and close, see what it does? Okay, that's all right, that's all right. Right, let's go back to that. So we're gonna create a incident task. So automatically, um, incident task um, to that group, and we're gonna add the fields um, short description just so we can. We're gonna take the short description from the trigger incident uh, down here. Bit bizarre, big lorry turned up outside my house. Not for me. Um, and I think we're just gonna save and close. So what have we got? We've got an instruction, we've got a create task, and then in resolve, we're going to say, I saw it before, wait for condition. Multiple errors. <laughs> I, should we put this in here? I don't know. Let's see what this does. So we're going to wait for incident task to resolve after specific act. Right, okay, when stage starts, oh, this, this might take some fettling. Right, automation, wait for, okay, wait for incident task. Wait for, ah, right, okay. So now I can access uh, kind of like the variables, right, in Flow Designer. So now I can access 2.1, which is this, 2.1. So I can access, do I have to click on it? What do I do? Um, wait for that, add conditions. Ooh, okay, wait for state. The state is close complete. Okay, wait for state to be close complete. And then I'm gonna add another instruction that says uh, resolve, ah, no, I'm gonna say communicate, fuck a spell, communicate res with caller. And that is going to be um, make the comms nice. I always say this, right, I should do this. And, uh, this is what I always used to say, write the comms, like you're writing to your gran. Make it nice, right, okay, save and close. So there we have it, we've got three stages or lanes as you were, um, if you will. So we've got intake, we're gonna talk nicely, then we've gotta got um, an instant task is gonna be generated, hopefully. Then we're gonna wait for that to be resolved and then we've got another instruction that says be nice. So let's activate that, activate, we've activated. I'm just gonna have a quick look at the diagram view. Nice. I like this service now. Wouldn't this be nice to bring up from a training point of view? Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? Right, so let's go ahead and give it a test. So in order to test this, we're gonna head on over to Service Operations Workspace and we're gonna pretend we're a Service Desk Agent. Okay, so we're in Service Operations Workspace. What we're gonna do is create an incident. I can't remember, but I don't believe I put any conditions. I think it's just create incidents. I'm trying to make it as quick as possible, but I'm old, so forgive me. Right, okay, so in here, we're gonna put in test for pad. Um, and I think, I don't see it, right? We don't need to put any assignment groups. Should we just assign it to the service desk anyway? Let's just do that. Well, let's fill out the caller, actually, first. <laughs> Probably be a good idea. We've gotta be nice to the caller, so we may as well fill them out. Right, so let's have a caller. Who should we have? Got to have Able, and let's click save. So now when this is saved, what we should have is a, um, a, a tab or a related item in, in Workspace that's called Playbook. And in that Playbook, it's gonna start giving us the, the kind of items or the instructions or the things, the activities um, that we've uh, set forth. Now, one thing to be aware of, right? So this playbook here is a related item. If um, you don't, if you're doing this on a, on a table, we've closed, chosen an incident, but if you're doing this on a, um, a custom table or um, a table that you've perhaps created uh, a playbook on and you don't see this, what you might need to do is to go into related items, which is here, and you may need to create an entry here. So you can see the tables here it's been created on. You may need to create an entry there if it doesn't extend one of those tables. Or if you go in here and there's an exclusion saying don't show on extended tables, you get the idea. I might do another video on that anyway. So if we go to playbook here, nice. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm a service desk agent. I've picked this call up. It's telling me to talk nicely. I can be nice to the caller. I can mark that as complete. May as well do that. Task completed. Okay, now what's going to happen? We pop on to in progress. Ooh, okay. So it's created a task. Has it created an incident task? Who knows? I thought it was iTask. Don't know. So it's created an incident task. It's assigned it to our group. We put on a test for pad. We have to assume the app engine admins, the group has picked this up and they've done what they needed to and they're closing complete. We're going to get there, people. We'll get there. They'll put some more information in there. Of course they would. Now, here it comes. We've gone, wait for it to be resolved. Again, it shows me as an, as an agent all the way along at what point in this process, this kind of semi-process, sub-process, if you will, I'm at. Now it's saying I've got one activity remaining. I have to be nice. I have to resolve the issue. And then I can mark complete. How cool is that, right? So I love, I love the fact that as a service desk agent, I can see at what stage in that kind of sub-process I'm at. What happens if I filter? Ah, oh, okay, awesome. In progress pending. So it tells you what's in progress as well. This is absolutely fantastic. How useful is that? Okay, so there's a whistle-stop tour of process automation design that uses flows and uh, playbook experiences. And I hope you found that useful. And if you did find it useful, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, do all the other kind of YouTube-y based stuff. But until next time, I've been Russ, and this is Service Nerd. Mm -hmm.